Today I have something kind of interesting. I have a Newtone IM5000 control unit in the shop for repair and as part of the customer's repair he sent me his model IS519 patio speaker. The 519 is used exclusively with the IM5000 and the IM5006 systems and you can see it's very similar to the IS515. The IS515 is an indoor station uh, the 519 is a patio station. The primary difference on the exterior of the unit has to do with the button panels. On an IS515 inside station, it has these raised push buttons that protrude through the face plate. Uh, since this is indoor, weather and water is not a consideration. An IS-519 was designed with a weatherproof, in quotes, uh, exterior touchpad cover. Uh, and this is what happens to these when they're outside for 10 or 15 years. The plastic deteriorates and the, buttons, the button caps break out and it makes these gaps where water and rain can get in. Uh, this particular station uh, I think has water has gotten into it and it's probably damaged the button board assembly to the point where it doesn't really function correctly any longer. Another difference is the LED indicator lights. On an IS-519 they use round LED lights uh, or LED indicators which glow behind a clear portion of the plastic overlay. On an indoor 515 speaker they use rectangular LEDs which slightly protrude through openings in the faceplate. So that makes the switchboard assembly on these two models different so they're not directly interchangeable. Unfortunately the speaker cover assemblies for the IS-519s are no longer available from Newtone and this breakout problem with the push button areas is a common problem and it's not easy to solve. So let's turn this over and take a look at the back. So I flipped over our, our IS-519 and what you can see here is the speaker cone is mounted at the top. Uh, this is an outdoor weatherized speaker cone which is also no longer available from Newtone. However, we do have uh, weatherized genuine Newtone speaker cones available uh, to replace these. One of the difference on the 519 and the 515 speaker cones are the size of the lug connectors on the barrier strip of the speaker cone. Uh, these are smaller than most other Newtone cones, but it's not really that big of an issue. So I've removed the screws and the plastic covers uh, and what we're looking at here is the back side of a two-sided board. Uh, you have the terminal connections for the intercom cable that comes into the station. You have a five switch dip pin assembly to set the code of this particular station. This one is set to number eight I believe. You have a lot of small surface mounted passive components. These are primarily resistors and a few capacitors. I think there's one or two small transistors up in this area. Not a lot going on there. This package is an NEC PD75108 which is a 4-bit microcontroller. It's a 64-pin package. Uh, this contains the firmware that allows this station to operate correctly. Uh, this, while this particular component can be purchased and replacing it is possible, there is no provision on this board to reprogram a blank microcontroller, so if this becomes damaged, this board is unrepairable. Fortunately, I don't think I've ever seen one of these with a damaged microcontroller. Now let's flip it over and look at the other. When you flip it over, you can see it's a two-sided board and a lot of components on the inner side of the board. There are three connectors which connect it to the switchboard assembly. These are the wires that go to the speaker terminals. These fortunately all simply unplug which makes removing the board easy. So we'll put this aside and let's take a look at so on the main side of the board, you can see you have a lot of integrated circuits. To go through them quickly, 
This is an A6393, which is a dual comparator. comparator. This is a 74HC125, which is simply a buffer IC. There is a TC4011, which is a two input logic gate. Tucked underneath this capacitor is a TC4066. This is a quad bilateral switch. There are several C1458 dual op amps. Uh, 1458s are a popular op amp in Newtone intercoms, 5006s and IM5000s. There is a, this is a TC9154, which is a two channel electronic volume control. Uh, this is what controls the volume when you use the volume control buttons on the front of the panel. Fortunately, these boards, although they're no longer available from Newtone, uh, they are relatively trouble-free and they are rebuildable to a point. Components on this side of the board are easy to replace. The small surface mount components on the other side, kind of a pain in the neck to do. Fortunately, there's a lot of these boards available, uh, some still new, lots of used boards. So generally speaking, uh, if you have a faulty speaker, getting it repaired is not much of an issue. Now we're looking at the, at the back of the switchboard assembly and you can see there's not really much going on here. It is a two-sided board. This is simply the side where the components are soldered on. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and we'll turn it over and look at the other side. So what you see on the component side of the board is rows of small tactile switches. There's a condenser microphone here. And here you can see the five dome-shaped top red LEDs which shine through the transparent part of the keypad membrane cover. If you compare these to the switchboard assembly for an inside speaker, you can see that these have these LEDs have rectangular tops and they're a entirely different shape than the LEDs on a patio speaker keypad assembly. So if you have a defective keypad and since patio station keypads are about as rare as you can get, what you can do to solve this problem is source an indoor keypad. Uh, the tactile switches and the other components are identical. The only real difference is the LEDs and the coating that's put on the board. I'll talk about the coating in a second. It's easy enough to desolder these rectangular red LEDs and replace them with the LEDs from the damaged boards. Now LEDs have polarity. There's a plus and a minus terminal on each one. So when you remove them, you have to insert them back in in the correct orientation, otherwise they won't light up. The difference with the coating is circuit boards that are exposed to harsher conditions are coated with a substance called conformal coating. It's a sealant that helps keep moisture off the board because moisture will cause corrosion, which is the problem with this board in the first place. Uh, conformal coating is not perfect, but it certainly is better than taking a board without it, which would be an inside board, and putting it outside. If you put an inside board into an outdoor speaker and it has any amount of exposure to weather, I would say it probably will last less than one winter. Uh, both sides of the board should be coated with conformal coating. It's something you can buy at your local electronics store or you can buy it online uh, if this is the kind of repair you're going to attempt yourself. So now I'm going to desolder these LEDs and put them in place of the LEDs on this inside board. So here I've removed the five red rectangular LEDs with their little plastic mounting bases. Uh, these are inserted through the square holes in the board and then the back sides are melted to hold them in place. So you have to clip off the back sides and then pop them out. Now that these have been removed, I'm going to remove the round LEDs and their standoffs from the patio board and install them back. And here's my completed board. I've re 
replace the original rectangular red LEDs with the dome-topped red, red LEDs from the original patio switchboard assembly. I made sure that they were in the correct orientation so they will light up properly. So the last thing to do is to seal this board with some conformal coating. I use Conform by Chemtronics. Chemtronics is a big manufacturer of electronic related chemical products. Uh, it's conformal coating. I'll simply set it up outside and give each side a coat which will seal it against moisture and then I'll reassemble the speaker, test it, and we'll be ready to go. So here we have our completely repaired and refurbished Newtone IS519 patio speaker. I reinstalled the switchboard assembly. I mounted the main board back in its mounting position, replaced the plastic cover. Always put the plastic cover back on over the main circuit board. It helps keep any water from running down the board, which will corrode it uh, quickly. And I installed it into one of our few remaining patio station speaker face assemblies. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is what these look like when they're new. The button panels are intact. There's no crack, so it'll keep water out of it. Unfortunately, we have a very limited number of these available. If you want more information about this type of repair, be sure to visit our website. Uh, it will be shown in the credits at the end of the video uh, where there's more detailed explanation about repairing Newtone intercom systems.